I think this entire project of doing this podcast, as I said previously, was really an attempt at me to kind of, you know, it was an attempt at self-therapy in a way, because I had this tendency, which I usually which I unfortunately still do nowadays, where I tend to kind of speak to myself a lot. Um, people might call it self-affirmations. People might call it PMA, whatever it may be. But there is a little bit of a concern in that I usually have sometimes full-blown conversations with myself about current topics, about my dreams and aspirations, about interactions I've had with people, about maybe these made-up fights in my head that I'm kind of, you know, specking out what I would have said and what I didn't say. All these sort of nonsense is going on. So I thought, you know what? The best place to kind of brain dump all of that kind of self-speak would be via the medium of a podcast. And back in the day when I first started this, my first sort of like introduction to podcasts were like Tim Ferriss, um, the author of the legendary book, The 4-Hour Workweek. Obviously, podcasts like Bill Burr, which is obviously a solo podcast that I kind of follow a lot. And obviously, the legend that is Joe Rogan. But essentially, a lot of that kind of stuff that I was listening to back then it kind of felt like and it's probably still to feels like this to this day where you kind of feel like you're a flyer in the wall um with these two guys or whoever is guests on these shows having a conversation right they're having a really riveting conversation you maybe look up to these people you maybe aspire to have the same sort of lifestyle that they do you maybe aspire to do your own thing whatever it may be but hearing people who have maybe figured life out in some degree talking about topics you know that maybe you are interested in or maybe you don't know too much about is pretty inspiring and can be kind of eye-opening especially for someone like myself who doesn't have many friends so when that happened I was like you know what that's pretty sick I can do that myself and it might help me with the self-speak so I started recording this podcast I started you first doing it via a dictaphone I had this little Sony dictaphone thing which I think I still have around here somewhere it's like an mp3 stick it's essentially it's a little it's a little micro stick that also kind of you know doubles up as a as a dictaphone that I'm assuming journalists would use when they're um, doing their interviews and whatnot and um, it worked pretty well. I would just speak into the microphone. I'd kind of rip the audio, put it up onto iTunes or podcasts, whatever it may be, and keep it going. After a while of kind of doing that a lot of times and kind of seeing the positive feedback I was getting and just how much I was enjoying it, I started little by little investing in some equipment and started to take it a little bit quote unquote seriously. But in the end, or at, you know, the kind of the main crux of this is still the fact that it allows me an opportunity to kind of dump all this self-speak that I don't tend to kind of have the opportunity to talk about around the dinner table, you know, in the pub somewhere, wherever it may be. Because even if I did have a big social group of friends, I still don't want to be the person holding court, you know, dictating or, you know, kind of, um, yeah, dictating the flow of the conversation and brain dumping all of my frustrations and worries and aspirations onto other people i think that's incredibly rude incredibly entitled and i'd rather just do it here so all of you and none of those people out there that are listening to my worries and my strains and my struggles and my plans and successes i do thank you for not giving me much pushback not telling me to shut up and allowing me to kind of live my best life on this place so i really do like it and then the other thing i was mentioned i was kind of thinking about when it comes to the seventh hundred episode of this podcast it's also given me a very black and white count of how long it actually takes to achieve quote-unquote greatness how long it actually takes to achieve the you know what i want to end up achieving which is essentially making this podcast pay for itself so i don't have to kind of pay my monthly hosting fees out of my own pockets and whatnot and blah, all the other stuff associated with getting a podcast up and running the equipment studio you know along the line when i do eventually get it and then of course providing me with an income that's allowed me to kind of pay rent that allowed me to go on my little holidays and whatnot and have the lifestyle that i like and buy the things i want to buy but essentially just a kind of a semi-decent lifestyle let's say let's say anywhere between the, the realms of like 30 grand plus in terms of covering my yearly expense there will come a point where this podcast will do this and it's going to be interesting to see what number episode that is what number episode i come on this podcast and say hey guys guess what this podcast is now full time it's now allowed me to kind of go full time and quit all my jobs i'm now doing this primarily thank you for your support it's been amazing as a token of my of my appreciation here's a fucking reward for you fans in this competition you get this whatever it may be that i end up doing right but i want to see what number that's going to be because i think in my life i've had one thing that's always been kind of you know hold me back a tiny bit 
which is not set lack of self-belief because I do think I'm amazing. I do think I'm the best ever to do it and all this malarkey, right? I have very insane delusions of grandeur, especially um, in comparison to what I've actually made and achieved in my bare hands. It's crazy. But one thing that's always held me back has been procrastination. I've always been a kind of person that's never shipped. And I think that's why I kind of preach the gospel of shipping so much. And that kind of comes from Steve Jobs, um, RIP, when he was at Apple, and essentially saying that, you know, ideas are what they are. Everybody's got ideas. Every, anybody can sketch. Anybody can come up with a concept um, idea or concept piece of artwork or whatever it may be, or a line sheet, PDF or whatever. Um, of you know of a collection that they want to make but rarely do people actually put their money where their mouth is um get some samples put stuff into production and actually ship um the items that they are talking about making and i think for me when it comes to my creative pursuits i just never followed through i have all these amazing ideas i'm thinking back to kind of some of these little t-shirt ideas and little pieces of you know memorabilia that i had when i was doing my club night back in the day with my friend miles from from before you know really cool ideas from t-shirts to zines to cameras to hats and shit to like bottles like all these crazy little things even i had like a design for like a a particular kind of beer bottle that i was going to design if we ended up collaborating with like heineken and all these brands back in the day when they were trying to do loads of activations around youth culture and club nights and going out and the night scene and shit and i never followed through doing it there was an idea there was a plan to do i remember the time because i think the alibi was like owned by this guy called dino who had this kind of collective creative agency sort of thing called real gold and he was planning to do some sort of like i forgot what it was exactly but if i remember correctly it was some sort of like anniversary t-shirt collection thing with all the different promoters that did club nights in the bar that he owned called the alibi which is obviously owned under the umbrella of real gold i didn't follow through with that loads of other things i kind of didn't do and most of it was just procrastination because i look through my hard drive now i've got like three of them my little lacy hard drives and i've got my i've got folders full full of pfd sorry p pdf png line sheets of t-shirt ideas of i've even got ideas for like combat pants and cargoes and you know whole collections of stuff that i wanted to do graphics and pieces of artwork that i went to put on t-shirts and never flipping followed through and i think the podcast was the first time that i finally did kind of put my money where my mouth was and actually followed through and you know haven't basically missed an episode haven't skipped anything basically i've been doing it every single week since the start and it's been really amazing to be honest it's been an amazing hobby but it's also been very um, illustrative of just how long it takes to achieve your goals and also it's kind of showed that if i am consistent if i do show up if i do kind of believe in myself if i don't need to ask permission and i kind of go for it then usually things kind of work out and for the most part i've also realized that at the heart of it I am a true bona fide creative, like truly, in the sense that this isn't, you know, for profit. I'm literally spending money making this thing, right? Um, I get like nearly, sometimes nearly a thousand views on the four episodes on YouTube. Maybe half of that listeners via the audio platforms and shit. So it's not crazy Joe Rogan numbers. So I'm not doing this because it's making me tens of thousands of pounds. It may do in the future, but for the short term and for the medium to long term, it definitely is a hobby that I'm just loving to do. I legitimately love, love to do. And I think that's something that I've kind of been encouraged to see in myself like, okay, cool you are a creative in the true sense of the word and that you just want to get your voice you just want to have your voice heard you want to have a point of view you want to have your point of view out there you want to share some of your experiences you want to talk about some of the projects you're working on you want to talk about your inspirations um your life goals your travels relationships fashion whatever stuff i'm talking about on here music i love to do that and the fact that i'm just doing it in a selfless manner it's great to see that it's also touching people and that they reach out and say hey i like this i like that i like that it's fucking been amazing even though that's not what i'm looking for and i'm not looking for anyone's validation or i'm not looking for anyone to give me permission to do anything it's also nice to know even though i'm kind of a, approaching it in a very selfish manner um that it's actually touching people also in this way so i just want to give a kind of shout out to all you guys who have been here along the ride i don't care if you joined on episode one 
if you enjoyed on episode 47 255 400 or even just this episode now 700 i thank you from the bottom of my heart for just being here listening to me when i when you can and just kind of giving me a chance because this has been one of the greatest hobbies and greatest fun things i've done in my adult life for a long time and especially now that i'm going through this kind of quarter life crisis where i'm kind of figuring out what my hobbies actually are outside of clubbing because now that's become a little bit of a shit show it's quite nice to have this one thing here that can kind of tether me and kind of hold me down when i'm a bit confused i'm a bit lost so thank you everybody out there for holding me down